percent I listened to, it. yeah, just sort of voicing things I'm angry about has definitely <laughs> made me have more of a relationship with why I'm actually angry. <laughs> Before it was just sort of like unbridled rage. Um, but yeah, thank you. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah. yeah sure. um, I was going to say, like, when you, to all of you, like, when you first started writing poetry, when was it a thing that you were like, actually, this is kind of what I want to do and where I want to go with this? Like, was there a defining moment in your head that you always knew you were going to do it? And then, like, what advice would you have for people who were looking, like, maybe not in the same place as you are, that I'm willing to, like, do it? Yes. Anyone want to start with that? Um, I wrote poetry my whole life, but I didn't really give myself permission to be a poet until I was uh, probably in my early 30s. And um, yeah, the defining moment I think for me was when I had my daughter and I realised that I wanted to live the life that I wanted to live and not what my parents wanted me to do, because I was a computer programmer. It's very different. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, you know, and at that point, I'd never got up on a stage before, um, and I was—I had this idea in my head that I had to study professionally to be a poet, and I was too late. I'd missed the boat, you know. But um, you know, I—I I, I did a, a professional writing and editing diploma, and I had a teacher in that class. When I went to that class, and I was like, "Oh, teach me how to write poetry. I need to learn how to write." And she's like, "Oh, there are no rules. Just do whatever you want. Just listen to your own voice." And that's a permission that I needed to kind of just, yeah, just do it. So it, it is challenging to. It's not like sometimes people come up to me and they're like, "Oh, it's so amazing what you do," and I'm like, "Yeah, but I started. You know, everyone starts there, and they just kind of build on that." I don't know if you, both of you had similar experiences, but. Um. Yeah, uh, and then back in 2012 was when I first started writing poetry. I sort of, it was whilst I was still at college and I'd sit in my English class and I'd write all this very melodramatic stuff. About <laughs> love and all these boys who didn't like me. Um, and, and, but it, it wasn't until after I left college, um, I, I joined um, a writers group in Birmingham called Poets Place run by Apples and Snakes and I learned about apples and snakes as, as a thing. Um, and, and, and then I was, I think I was very lucky in that I fell into the right friendship circle and I met the right people, um, which is very unfortunate that you have to fall into the right friendship circle to get your, you know, to get gigs and stuff and to get paid commissions and whatnot. Um, but yeah, I got my first gigs very quickly, but that was because I was lucky enough to have fallen into that right friendship circle. But it was when I did my first commissions, I was like, Oh, I can get paid for this too. This is fantastic. Um, and and then like learning about all these like massive poets like Kate Tempest and Holly McNish and Joel Taylor and all these amazing amazing artists who are like actually making a living out of this. And I was like, whoa, that's actually a possibility. Wow. Um, but yeah, that, that, yeah. So now I'm doing it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was definitely quite similar. Um, I I grew up in Shepherd's Bush and. My dad's a gardener and he had this shed in the garden and I just like lie on the shed like writing really like sort of at the age of like, eight writing like you know is life just a hamster cage <laughs> <laughs> you know it's really good. and yeah lyrics to like you know to lads who I've sort of seen on the street once being like you've got blood running through my veins like at the age of nine quite intense but um, uh, but, <laughs> but yeah so I, I yeah I guess like so yeah it's always been the kind of a thing and then I think, yeah, doing the creative writing, um, creative writing masters at Birkbeck and then um, just kind of coming to poetry events was when I started actually realising it. Maybe I could just sort of actually <laughs> perform but then speak out. And um, yeah, I think just, yeah, just, you just gotta just like be, be you <laughs> as much as possible yeah. and um, just kind of write whatever your voice is, <laughs> even if it's fucking shit sometimes, just keep going. Um, that's my big problem with me. I'm always like, that's fucking shit, I can't do it for three months! <laughs> and I have a breakdown, so I've done it for three months, so yeah, try not to go into that routine. <laughs> but yeah, thank you. That was great, I relate to so much of what you guys have said. Um, any other questions? Yeah? I had a question, um, for all, all, all of you, really. Um, in terms of coming back to Grace, would you say, I'm sorry? Do you, how do you overcome in terms of, when you talk about her in your poems, and that kind of the addict that we say we're not good enough, or what the fuck are you doing when you write this shit? No, what's the listen? What advice would you give against a 
giving yourself more self-love in a way of, of writing without having that demon talking to you. <laughs> Wish I'd worked that one out. <laughs> no, no, I think, I, yeah, I, I think, yeah, I still haven't quite worked it out. <laughs> but, um, but definitely just, I, I guess just, just kind of being, al being alone. I, it sounds weird, I was always terrified of being alone. And then like just like, going off on a little walk on my own and stuff. And just start sort of sitting with a page and be like, it's okay if this is crap, it's okay. <laughs> like, just do it. Yeah, that's probably about it. Sorry. No. <laughs> sorry, not sorry. Um, I, I think for me personally, um, it's it like what sort of um, um, makes those demons sort of be quiet for a bit um, is is when people, girls, Muslim girls specifically, come up to me after a, after a performance. So I, I write a lot about trauma and and you know, a lot of things that I just don't talk about enough. Um, and, and it's like when, when these young people come up to me and they're like, I resonated with that, I got that, and like, you've said stuff that no one really talks about, and I felt so alone, but it's so nice to know that I'm not alone, and it's like, I'm happy to know that I'm not alone! It's fantastic! Um, and, and it's that, I live for that, absolutely live for that, that, that makes it so worth it, so, so worth it. I can relate to that. Definitely. And also, I just want to add one thing, which is, uh, I remember when I first started writing poetry and um, it was at a time where I was kind of leaving my marriage and my culture and everyone around me was like, you're not normal, you're not normal. And um, and I, I, I had this epiphany where I was like, hang on a minute, I can't be the only human being that feels this way. There's got to be other people that feel what I'm feeling right now. And that's a thing that, that has kept me going is like, you know, if I, if I write a poem about something, there'll be someone out there that's like, yes, I felt that. And so it's about the connection and like what you were saying, just, yeah, so just remembering that, you know, you know you're not the only one and um, there's always going to be naysayers, there's always going to be people trying to put you down, especially if I felt, I find. If you're becoming, you know, if, if you are very unique and you do have something to say and, you know, you are very different, there are going to be people that are going to try and knock you down 100%. And you've got to be ready for that and just always look at that connection because the people that are trying to knock you down, they're not the ones you're trying to connect with. Focus on the ones that you are trying to connect with and yet yeah, it is a constant struggle. Even today, it still is, I'm sure, with all of you, you would agree. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Great, that's been really great. Um, oh, quick one. Very quick question, yeah. Um, I just wonder, how do you remain truth to yourself in your writing? I just always write the truth. <laughs> yeah, I mean, because I spent all my, like, I spent the first 30 years of my life not being honest with myself, doing what everyone wants me to do. And so I kind of snapped, and then was, and I went from being like this to the complete opposite. <laughs> and so there's really no option for me. I get very like depressed if I have to be anything other than honest in my writing. So that's why. So. I'm very much there as well. I just I just write what is honest to me and true to me, um, and I I think that is one of my core values as a writer to to be completely honest in my writing and to not write. The sake of my audiences, yeah. myself, uh, yeah. Yeah, same, you know. <laughs> yeah, basically the same. Like, um, a, a, the only truth that you really know is what's true, like what feels true to you, and yeah. that's just kind of what you have to write. And same thing of like, spent a long time <laughs> trying to do what made other people happy. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, great. Well, thank you for answering, and thank you for. <laughs>